I'm Johnny Peterson, Fire Marshal for the City of Owasso. Welcome to the 2020 Owasso Fire Department Fire Prevention Education Presentation. This year, the Owasso firefighters have created a video and will be discussing and demonstrating the skills necessary for you to escape from your home in case of a fire. They will be discussing smoke detectors, stop, drop, and roll, no two ways out of your home, um, crawl low under smoke, get out, stay out, and then we'll be showing you a firefighter in their gear. And the last thing they will be discussing is this year's fire uh, theme topic, fire safety in the kitchen. So enjoy the video, teach these skills to your family and friends, and as always, be safe. Until next year when we see you again in the school, thank you, and again, stay safe. Hello, I'm Keith Deakins with the Owasso Fire Department, and I'm here today to talk to you about the importance of a smoke alarm. A smoke alarm is a firefighter's best friend because it helps keep you safe and you all are very important to us. So, when you get home, I would like you to see if you can find a smoke alarm in your house. They should be in your bedrooms or in your hallways. And smoke rises, it's up high, so your smoke alarm should be up high, either on your wall or on your ceiling. What smoke alarms do is they use a sensitive little nose in here and they sniff all day for smoke, all day, all night, every day of the week every day of the year all they're doing is smelling so whenever they detect smoke they're going to tell you and they start barking at you just like a dog would but their bark is more of a beep so i'm going to let you listen to it now that indicates that the smoke alarm has detected smoke in your house so you should get up and you should leave your house either through the back door or through the front door, whichever one you're closer to. Smoke alarms also work with a battery, and the battery is inside right here. This battery will wear out every year, so you should pick one day that you replace the batteries in all your smoke alarms. You can do that on your birthday or on Christmas or any other day that you choose. If you have any questions about smoke alarms, please ask your teachers. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Alyssa Lofton with the Owasso Fire Department. This is my partner, Jeff Cox. Today we're gonna teach you how to stop, drop, and roll. So if you're ever in a fire, or if your clothes ever catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll is the technique you'll use. So Jeff is gonna show us how to do it. He's really good at it. So if Jeff's clothes are on fire, he's going to stop what he's doing, drop to the ground. He's going to cover his face so he doesn't get any smoke in his face. Then he's going to roll over and smother that fire out. Until the fire's out, just like that. Awesome. So that's how you just stop, drop, and roll. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Thanks. Okay, so whenever we're making sure to get out of the house, whenever there's a fire, we're gonna always make sure that we have two ways out. But one thing that we should prioritize whenever we're on our way out is if we live with anybody that is gonna have an issue getting out of the house without assistance. So if we got grandma, or in this case, grandpa, in the house with us that can't get out. So we're gonna go in, grandpa, wake up. We got a fire in the house, we gotta get out. Here, let me help you up. Here's my cane. Grab your cane. Here's your cane. All right, let's go. So we're gonna exit the house, calmly, make a right. You're going to find out two, two ways to get out of your bedroom, your living room, your dining room. It's a fun game to play if you can get your parents or, your, or yourself and you draw a plan of your house. Uh, similar to this, you can find out different ways to get out. So let's, let's practice here. Let's look at our bedroom three if we're in our bedroom. Let's see what ways we can get out. We can go through the bedroom door, out the front door. That's one way. 
we can go out the window. That's another way. So we need at least two ways out of each room. Okay, can we think of a third way? Let's try here. How about we can go into the dining room and into the outdoor living and outside. There's three. It's a fun game to play, especially with your brothers and sisters. Um, so there's different ways you can get out and you can plan this. It's kind of like, it looks kind of like a maze. Um, Edith again is exit drills in a home. And it's a fun, a fun game to play with your friends and family. Hello everyone, my name is Jared Grantham. I'm a firefighter with the Owasso Fire Department. We're going to teach you today about crawl low under smoke. Smoke has several properties you need to know about. It's very quiet, that's why we have smoke detectors that help us wake up and realize that there's danger in our house. It's also poisonous. Many of you have probably been around a campfire. You know what happens when that smoke blows in your face. You start coughing, makes your eyes water, your nose run. That's because smoke is actually poison. It's very important that we don't breathe it and that we stay out of it. You'll see later on that smoke rises to the top. That's why the topic of our title is Crawl Low Under Smoke. We're going to stay low in the cool, fresh air, and we're going to get out of the house. Hello, everyone. Now that we're inside, we're going to show you some things to do if you wake up and your smoke detectors are going off in your home. As you can see right now, there's no smoke in this room, so we're going to show you a few things that you don't need to do. The first thing that you don't need to do is crawl low if there's no smoke in your room. The most important thing is to get out of the building. We don't want to go back for pets, we don't want to go back for lost toys. Our goal is to get out and get to our meeting place. We want to make sure that we're moving with a purpose to get out of the building. So another thing that we're not going to do is crawl extremely low and slow. We want to crawl on our hands and knees. What we don't want to do is something like this. We're here at the Owasso Fire Department Training Center, and we're going to show you now some examples of crawl low under smoke. As you can see, we have some training smoke above me that's not as dangerous, but does show you some of the things we talked about. Down here where I am, I can still see, and it's cool. Up here, it's very hard to see. It's hot, and it's poisonous. That's why we want to crawl low under smoke. We don't want to take our time like you saw. We want to crawl on our hands and knees and get out of the building quickly. So my friend, Firefighter Sykes is going to show us an example of how to get out of a building correctly. Go ahead, Sykes. You can see he's on hands and knees, going straight for his exit. He's going to go straight to his meeting place, staying low. Hello, my name is Patrick with the Owasso Fire Department. Today I'd like to talk to you kids about what to do once you get outside of your house if you smell or see smoke or fire. In some of the previous videos, we talked about smoke alarms and what to do if you hear the alarm go off and how to get out of your house. This video is gonna be about what to do once you get outside of your house and how to be safe. What we like to call the place where you go whenever you leave your house it's called a meeting place. A meeting place is a safe place you go that you and your family are aware of before a fire happens to make sure that your family and the fire department know where you're at. It's called accountability. So we want you guys to go to a place whenever we pull up in the fire truck so we, guys, so we know that you're safe and we don't have to go back into the house fire to try and save you. There are several examples of a meeting place. The end of your driveway by a mailbox, maybe a tree in your front yard, a neighbor's house, the flagpole. These are all examples of places outside of your house that you can go to. 
everyone in your family needs to know about these places before a fire happens. It's good to have a conversation or a discussion with all members of your family. So talk to your mom and dad about where you would go if a fire happened in your house and you had to get outside. Now, once we're outside and we go to our meeting place, we need to stay there. We don't want to go there and then run and go play somewhere. We don't wanna be in the backyard. Whenever we get to our meeting place, we wanna stay there. Again, it's about accountability and knowing where you were at for your family and for us. Now we're gonna go outside and I'm gonna show you some examples of a meeting place. A tree in the front yard is way better than a tree in the backyard. We will have no idea where you're at if we pull up in the fire engine and you're at a tree in the backyard. So just another good example of a meeting place, a tree in the front yard. This is firefighter Brett. Today, we're gonna to talk to you and show you how we put on our gear for emergencies. So Brett, let's go ahead and get started. So first, he's gonna take off his regular shoes. We're gonna start with our hood. So unlike a typical hood that keeps your ears and head warm, this hood actually protects us from heat. It helps keep our ears and our neck safe. So then the next thing he's gonna do He's going to put on his pants and his boots, and you might see that we already have our boots tucked into our pants. We do that so it allows us to respond faster to emergencies. So he's got them pulled up, and these pants are really heavy, so we have suspenders to help keep them up. Then we have extra safety precautions, so we have a zipper, button, and a Velcro. Awesome, he's all buttoned up. So the next step is he's going to put on his jacket. And this jacket is also really heavy, just like a winter coat that you would have at home. But again, instead of protecting us from cold, it protects us from heat. It has multiple layers in it. This outer layer, this brown layer that you guys see, helps protect us from scrapes, such as from furniture or things that we can't see, and smoke. And same thing, we have multiple safety steps. We have the zipper and Velcro to make sure it doesn't come off in an emergency. All right. The next thing Brett's going to do is he's going to turn on his air pack and put his air cylinder on. So this is shaped like a backpack, but instead of having books, this actually has fresh breathing air for us to breathe in case we have to go into a smoky building or into a fire. So you heard kind of that vibrating sound that just lets him know that his air pack is on and ready to be put on. Awesome. All right, he's going to tighten the shoulder straps and it also has a belt to go around your waist because we don't want it to move around a whole lot when we're working in a structure. Excellent, good job Brett. Alright, the next thing he's going to put on in is, is his mask. And this mask protects his face, his eyes, his nose, and his mouth from heat and it also connects to his backpack to allow him to breathe clean air and smoke. And then he's going to put his hood back on to protect his head and his ears. We want to make sure there's not any skin showing around his face mask. Perfect. You did a great job. All right. Next thing he's going to do is his helmet. Just like you guys have bicycle helmets or helmets that you wear when you skate or rollerblade, this is going to protect his head. But then it also has a face shield for extra protection for his eyes. All right. He's going to connect his chin strap. He's going to tighten it down. Perfect, he's got his face shield on. All right, next he's gonna put on his gloves. This is the last, second to last step. This helps protect his hands from heat. Again, like the rest of our gear, it is very heavy and very thick, but it just keeps all the heat and smoke out and it helps protect his hands from getting scrapes. And the last thing he's gonna do here, he's gonna clip in his regulator. This is gonna allow him to breathe fresh air. So it kinda sounds a little funny. Go ahead and say hi, Brett, let's hear your voice. Good. All right, so when you see him in your house in case of emergency, we want you to come to him. He is there to help you and help you get out safe with your family. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys have a good year, and we'll see you next year at school. The leading cause of fires in the kitchen is unattended cooking.
stay in the kitchen when you're frying, boiling, grilling, or broiling food. If you are simmering, baking, or roasting food, check it regularly and stay in the home. Thanksgiving is the number one day for fires involving cooking equipment. Cooking is the leading cause of home fires and home fire injuries. Hey mom, mom. What? Watch this. Hey, get out of the kitchen. This is a good no, free zone. Watch. watch. Oh, that's really nice. Oh wow. Okay, kid free zone. Out. Out, out. How far away do I have to stay? Out. Three feet. Three out. feet. <laughs> Hey, what are you cooking? Do you need any help? Sure. Okay. What do I need to do? Hug in your shirt. Okay. And I'll roll up your sleeves. Because loose clothing can hang down and catch on fire, right? Yes. anything away from the stove that can burn. Always keep a lid nearby when cooking. If a small fire starts, cover the pan and turn the burner off. Keep it covered until it's cool. <laughs> 